In for Channel Africa News, I am Chandu Ligege. SABC News. The African Perspective. Africa in Business, 1 to 2 p.m. Oh, thank you, Chandu, for that update. It is six minutes after one Central African time and we're coming to you live from Johannesburg in South Africa. Uh, this Thursday, the 8th of June, uh, heads of state and government that are part of the common market for East and Southern Africa Commerce are converging in Lusaka at Zambia's capital for the 22nd summit, hosting its headquarters in the Southern African mineral-rich country. The summit is coming back to Zambia after the 20th edition held in 2018. Our Zambia correspondent, Arthur Davis Sikopo, who will keep us updated on the summit, now gives us an account of meetings ahead of the regional event. Indeed, it was last on the Zambian soil which also houses its headquarters in 2018, when leaders focused on digital economic integration as the central theme. However, the 2023 summit is running under the theme Economic Integration for a thriving commerce anchored on green investment, value addition and tourism. As per tradition, the summit is preceded by Ministers of Foreign Affairs meeting and later, the Commerce Business Forum. The 2023 Ministers of Foreign Affairs meeting is the 18th and is currently on in Lusaka, which over 15 ministers are present and others represented by proxies from all 21 member states. The Ministers of Foreign Affairs meeting has its main agenda signaled around regional peace and security, negative forces in the Great Lakes region, emerging security challenges such as terrorism and climate change, elections in the Comesa region, and is also seeing the election of the Comesa Committee of Elders who will serve as peace ambassadors. Chile Shekapwepwe is Comesa Secretary General who speaks to some of the concerns. Sudan is one of the founding members of Comesa and the home of the Comesa Court of Justice. It has an invaluable role to play in the Comesa regional integration agenda. Our region has witnessed the resurgence and escalation of activities of M23 movement. You shall be invited to consider their activities alongside activities of other negative forces that operate in the Great Lakes region and tremendous efforts being undertaken towards the resolution of the prevailing situation. As a regional body, we're also concerned over any renewed escalation that could result in spillover effects and thus have devastating impact on the whole region. Further, progress reports on various activities of the Secretariat are being given as the region looks at the status of implementation of commercial programs on governance, peace and security. The progress report includes operationalization of the Comesa early warning systems, conflict prevention and management, security, trading for peace, implementation of the Africa peace and security architecture, and the adoption of the mediation strategy. Zambia's Vice President Mutari Narumango opens the minister's meeting and points out the need for peace. Therefore, it is in Comesa's interest to ensure that peace prevails at all times because instability anywhere on the continent is instability everywhere. Mr. Lumango, the Vice President of Zambia, is further expressing concern on continued conflict in Sudan, the Tigray region of Ethiopia and other areas on the continent. What is our particular significance was the signing of an agreement to end the conflict in the Tigray region of Ethiopia. We commend the parties in Ethiopia. Similarly, we are encouraged by the transition process in Libya. And I call on your meeting to provide guidance that will resolve all other outstanding issues. The Zambian Vice President also pointed out some positives obtaining in the region. The recent opening of the Chipata Muchinju one-stop border facility between Zambia and Malawi, the recent presidential elections in East Africa and elsewhere are key reminders of what we can achieve when peace prevails. And Albert Shingiro, Burundi Minister of Foreign Affairs, is hopeful that the meeting will yield positive results, not only for the region, but for the continent at large. 
After all is said and done for the day, the report of the minister's meeting is being presented to the summit, the highest organ, for endorsement by heads of states and government as they sit this Thursday. Reporting for the SABC's Channel Africa in Lusaka, Zambia, I am Arthur Davis, Skopo. Africa in business, 1 to 2 p.m. In a significant development for Kenya's banking industry, job opportunities have surged to a seven-year high, reaching an impressive milestone of over 36,000 positions. According to recent disclosures by the Central Bank of Kenya, the sector witnessed a remarkable increase of about 3,600 new staff in 2022, marking the highest growth in 14 years since 2008. And for more, we are joined on the line by economists an economist in Kenya, Martin Adati. Martin, good afternoon and thank you for joining us on African Business. Yeah, good afternoon, Lulu. I'm fine. Now, Martin, what do you make of these job job opportunities in the banking sector? Uh, the job opportunities are coming up because the Kenyan economy has been expanding. On average, in the last uh, two, three years, the economy has expanded by as much as 7%. So that is what happened.